Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. As you can see, I have a slew of phones here in front of me. I actually got the GXP1625 connected to the software UCM after I made that last video. So we have three phones. I have right over here the Sangoma S300, the GXP1625, and over here, let me see if I can do this without knocking things over, I have the Grandstream GHP611W, that's the hotel phone. By the way, Stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to give you an update on getting that hotel phone to connect to the software UCM via zero config. If you remember in the last video, I was having some issues with that, but I think I have that figured out. So stick around and I'll let you know what's going on. So today we're going to get the VoIP.ms trunk configured in the software UCM that should allow us to make um, incoming, take incoming and make outgoing calls. So we'll test that using my cell phone. And then I am also going to create an inbound route and an outbound route as part of that process. So let's get started. If you're looking up here at the screen, you could see I'm already signed into the software UCM. And in this area right here under trunks, you could see I have no trunks set up. Once we set the VoIP.ms trunk up, we should get, if everything goes well, a nice blue available dot. So let's get started with the process. Let's come over here to extension trunk in the left menu. We're going to click on VoIP trunks. I'm going to click on add a SIP trunk. And under type, I'm going to select from the three register SIP trunk. Now you can, if you want to do any further Googling on the differences between peer SIP trunk, register SIP trunk, and accounts SIP trunk. That's up to you. But for this demonstration, we're going to go with SIP trunk. I'm going to type in the provider's name. Now, there is a list. Grandstream does supply a list. And uh, believe it or not, VoIP.ms is not in this list. So I'm going to just type it in manually. And then I'm just going to add the host name. And this is the region within the United States where I want my PBX to connect to to route the calls. So I'm going to copy it from my notepad and just make it easier and paste it in here. And you would put your information here. So if you're on the other side of the country, like I'm on the East Coast, if you're on the West Coast, you would try to pick a region that's closer to you. Transport, we're going to leave set. We're going to scroll down to the two required fields. We're going to put in the username and password, and this information is supplied by your SIP provider. So again, for sake of ease, I have it in my notepad. I'm just going to copy and paste this information in. And then... I'm going to come down and say save. We could leave everything else as is. And now that the trunk is created, I'm going to go back in and edit it. We're going to go to advanced settings, and I'm just going to move G dot, the G.729 codec up to the top because I know that is the one that VoIP.ms uses. So we're going to move that up to the top. And then let's see what else we got here. And pretty much everything else here can stay the same. So we're going to go ahead and say save. Hopefully that'll take a second or two to propagate. If we go back up to system status and go to dashboard and I refresh the page, it says unregistered. But if I refresh this, hopefully, we'll get a blue registered status. All right, so it took a few minutes to propagate, but now that we have a registered trunk, let's go ahead and create the inbound route. So we're gonna come over to the left menu. We're gonna click on extension and trunk, click on inbound routes. We're gonna click on the add button. And since we only have one trunk, it's picking that one trunk by default. But if you had multiple trunks, you could select the trunk provider that you want from the drop down list here. We're going to fill out the required fields. So we're going to come over to inbound route name, and I'm just going to call this inbound calls. Let's come over to the dialing pattern. And for this demonstration, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to do a generic basic dialing pattern for 10 digit dialing. So it'll be started with an underscore followed by 10 lowercase x's. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then finally, we're going to come down to the default destination. From the drop down, you have many different options. We could send it to an IVR. If you don't know what an IVR is, that's like when you call a business and you get, thank you for calling so and so. If you want sales, press one. For service, press two. Things like that. But we're not going to do that. We're not going to send it to a voice group. We're not going to send it to a ring group. A ring group, again, in a in an office situation, you can have three secretaries or three assistants sitting at, in the main office. You could have it ring all three phones. So in case two are away from the desk and one is there, one of them can answer the call. So, But again, for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to have it go to an extension. And I'm going to pick out of the three, extension 1001, that happens to be the Grand Stream 1625 that you see here right in front of me. Once that's all done, we're going to go ahead and say save, apply changes, and we have our inbound route created. Now to make outgoing calls, we're going to create an outbound route. And again, it's going to be very similar. Click on outbound routes, click on the add button, and we got to give the outbound rule a name, so I'm going to call it outbound calls. And then the same thing with the pattern, 10 digit dialing. So underscore one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The privilege level, I'm going to make it local to match the extensions. And then the last thing we have to do is come down to the trunk area and select our trunk. And that's the VoIP.ms trunk. And if we had a failover or a backup trunk like I had in, like I have in my production system, you would select that here. Now, just a note, in order to use this trunk as the main trunk for this demonstration, I disconnected the VoIP.ms trunk as my failover trunk in my production system. So uh, I'll be putting that back after we demonstrate this. So I think we got everything here. And if you want to know more about the privilege, privilege levels, I have done videos in the past on setting up the Grandstream UCM 6302 in more detail. So if you want to learn more about it and dive a little deeper, go back and check out those videos because they take a deeper dive. This is primarily just to get the trial software UCM connected to the outside world. So let's go ahead and say save and apply changes. Okay. We have our three extensions. We have our registered trunk right there. So theoretically, let me switch to a different camera. Theoretically now, I should be able to make an outgoing call to my cell phone. So let me pick up extension 1001. I have my phone on silent because obviously I'm recording, but you could see it here. It is ringing. So when I hang up, it should go back to my regular home screen. And there we go. Okay. So that was successful. So now we're going to go the other way around and hopefully it will ring extension 1001. So let's do that. Okay, extension 1001 is ringing. Hello? Hello? Let's see if you can hear the audio. Hello? 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 Okay, so we do have success with that. By the way, I hope you found that helpful. It's not really hard to make a connection to a SIP trunk provider. You just have to select the provider that will work for you. I happen to like Telnex. The plan I'm on is a pay-as-you-go plan, which is really, really nice because I don't get a lot of business calls. Primarily, my clients use my personal cell phone, which it is what it is. 
but uh, I like the pay-as-you-go feature. Same thing with VoIP.ms. I have a pay-as-you-go feature there, but I do prefer Telnex for ease of use, although this was pretty straightforward. Whichever trunk provider that you use, make sure that you get the required information to set up the trunk in the actual software UCM, or as most people call it, a PBX. Okay, so now let me go back to SuperSource real quick because I want to show you uh, under zero config. Okay, we're in the area under device management under zero config. You can see now I have the GXP1625 registered and I have the GHP611W registered. And what I think happened was after the video went public, I did a little bit more digging and I found that the GHP611W, the hotel phone, registered fine in my production system through zero config, but yet it would not register on the software UCM. And I think I mentioned in the last video that it was potentially possibly as a beta glitch, but as it turns out, and I think this is was the pro or was the problem. It makes logical sense to me. The production system that I'm running is one or two firmware versions behind the software UCM. So when I realized that and I said, hmm, the phone is working with the older firmware, but it's not working with the software UCM, which is a couple of firmware versions ahead. So what I did was I checked to see if there was a, a firmware upgrade for the hotel phone, and in fact there was. So I upgraded the firmware on the hotel phone, and after I did that, as you can see on the screen here, it was able to register as expected using the software UCM. So I'm thinking all the firmware in the phone preferred the older firmware in my production system. Since the UCM is running a newer firmware, the older firmware wasn't 100% compatible, but once I updated the phone's firmware, it, it registered just fine. So anyway, I think that was the problem. Uh, it makes sense to me because now it is working. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and I hope you liked this video. Keep checking back on the channel because I'm hoping to produce content, I don't know, on a, I should say, more regular basis, but I'm going to just, I don't want to produce content just for the sake of saying, oh, I got to get a video out every week, but if I feel I have something worthwhile sharing, I will be putting out content in the near future. So once again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it, put a comment down below. It helps get some traction on the views. And that's about it. Take care.